Shout out to Liz. Shout out to Liz. All right. There. Okay, that's enough fun for one class. All right, let's read this real quick. What I want you guys to do is the same thing that we did on the last example problem. I want you to read this stuff. Okay. I want you to read that stuff. Underline just words that you think are important. Circle phrases that you think are important. Actually, let's do it a, a different way. Underline words that you don't know the definition of, like you don't know what the word means, and circle phrases that you think are important. Okay. It could be a box. Okay. Well, I don't need to underline any words because I know all of this. I'll just drink my coffee. I know all this. What is super well, if, if you get to just drink your coffee, then we can. It's not even a real word. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's in the dictionary. Yeah. So is ain't. Ain't is a real word. Focus. Focus. The linear equation shown is written in the slope intercept form of the equation. Its graph is a line with the slope of m and the y intercept of b. A linear relationship has a constant rate of change. You will find the rate of change m and the initial value b for a linear situation from a table of values. So, if I were to circle certain things, I would say that and somebody said, can we do a box? Sure, let's do boxes. So, oops, that's not the right. So I would say this is important. Oops, I can't do the box on this thing. Dang it. So this is an important phrase, the slope form of an equation. Did, how many of you guys, by show of hands, how many of you guys circled that? Okay. How many of you guys circled slope M? Yeah. How many of you guys circled Y intercept B? How many of you guys circled rate of change M? Okay. How many of you guys circled initial value B? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, how many of you guys circled this? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Circle everything that's yeah. highlighted. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> that's why they highlight it. No way. So, so shh. here's the thing, though. Do you guys ever stop to think about the words that are highlighted no. when you read it? No. no. Well, I know they're highlighted, so I know there's somehow important. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. Shh. Listen, you guys are having conversations. You're supposed to be listening. Here's the thing. This book is written to teach you this stuff. Now, Mr. Adams knows it, but every word, if you notice on our last example, Mr. Adams basically said what we just circled. I said it's a constant rate of change. This says that a linear equation is a constant rate of change. I have memorized the words that are highlighted in your book. You need to memorize the highlighted words or phrases in your book. That's how you learn math. That's the beginning. That's the foundation. That's the very simple. And it's the easiest thing that you could do. The way that I know how to do all these math problems, whether it's math eight all the way up to calculus, is I've memorized all the highlighted phrases. And the easiest way to memorize something is to read it over and over and over. I say that because I was a math student too. And sometimes I get a problem and I just look at it and be like, oh, I don't know what to do. But because I eventually started reading my book, I would memorize things. I go, oh yeah, when you see this, then you do this. Because I memorized it. So when I see a linear equation, I go, oh, M is the slope. The slope is a constant rate of change because it's written in the slope intercept form that all linear equations are usually written in y equals mx plus b. m is the constant rate of change, where b is the y-intercept, but b is also the initial value. In fact, if you go back and look at your notes, every time that I said y-intercept and b, I would say usually the initial value. 
And I don't know if you guys even picked up on that. Let's move on. Example number one, it says a phone salesperson is paid a minimum weekly salary and commission for each phone sold as shown in the table. Confirm the relationship of a linear, or or, I'm sorry, confirm that the relationship is linear and give a constant rate of change uh, and the initial value. Okay, do you have a question? Oh, okay. That's a great question. All right. So let me write the question down and we'll come back to it. Okay. She's saying, look, I don't get this. (laughs) She's like, "Hmm, what is Y equal? Does it equal B? Does it equal M? Does it equal X? The short answer is yes. It equals all of them. We'll get to it in a second. So now watch this. Let's finish the question. So what we're asked to do is find, we need to confirm that it's linear. Well, if it's linear, it has a constant rate of change and it probably has an initial value. By the way, what is this initial value? What does that equal? Well, the initial value is the y-intercept. If you guys memorize this, you would say, oh, that's the y-intercept. That will have to be my b. And the constant rate of change is the slope. What's the variable for slope? M. Well, that goes in here, right? This is my slope. And we are going, you guys should be writing this down. I'm writing it down and I'm seeing kids not writing down stuff. I don't care. That's why I gave you binders and notebooks. Write them down on a separate sheet of paper if you have to. It's important. By the way, when I have you write it down, doesn't that go in your brain another way? That's how you memorize it. Yeah. Well, we got to get it in there somehow. Write it down. All right. So I'm going to, I don't want to talk too fast, but um, this is really y sub 2 minus y sub 1 all over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So they're actually counting, calculating the slope, right? So let's look at this for a second. They're saying 630, 630, that's the y value. And then 20 is the x value. In other words, when x equals 20, y equals 630. Do you guys see that? Let's label that. These are the x values and these are the y values. And then over here, when x equals 10, y equals 480. So what they're doing is they're taking these two sets, plugging them into this formula to get the slope. And when they do that, it's 15. Question? Yes. Um, why does it have to be like the y sub 2 like That's a good question. The question was, Mr. Adams, you're making a complicated... Well, that wasn't the question, but this is what kids <laughs> tell me sometimes. Why are... Uh, why are you making it complicated? Why can't we just do X and Y? Let's do this example. Um, based on the formula, I would guess that um, 10 comma 480 is X sub 1, Y sub 1. And 20 comma 630 would be X sub 2 y sub 2, right? And the question is, why are you labeling them? Let's assume I didn't label them. Let's assume I go in there and I say, oh, here's a y value, 480, and the other y value is 630. Um, and then, uh, then I have the other x value, and then the other x value. What's uh, 480 minus 630? Do it on your calculator real quick. Tell me what it is. Am I? Negative 150. What's negative 150 divided by 10? Negative 15. Negative 15. Why is it negative 15? Somebody tell me why it's negative 15. Yes. Um, 
in different spots. Now, how 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 many times do you think I've seen that as a math teacher? A lot. What eliminates that? Yeah. How do you identify what order they go in? When you label them as X sub 1, Y sub 1, X sub 2, Y sub 2. By the way, you need to learn that because in algebra we do a lot of subset notation. So the, the practical reason that we do the subset notation is um, it helps you to identify this is the first set of X and Y. This is the second set of X and Y. But an even more practical purpose is that you put them in the right order in the formula. So if you have a formula, well, they're all X's. They're all Y's. Any point on the line is an X and a Y. How do I identify which point I'm working with? Yeah. Correct. You're making my case for me, right? But if you label what they are, then you'll more likely put them in the right spot. I, I guess what I'm saying is, why is that difficult for you guys? Is it is it difficult to go, oh, this is the first set of X and Y? Or is it the extra step that you have to write stuff down? I think I think sometimes you guys have had a certain level of math, and, and I don't want to go too far into this. Let me finish this example problem, and we'll, and we'll talk about it. So anyways... Um, when we when we when we do that for all these points, we get a constant rate of 15. So the constant rate of change is 15. What does that mean? Yeah, that M, my slope, is 15. And then it says the salesperson receives a $15 commission for each phone sold. Oh, that's good. And then we want to find the initial value. Well, we don't know what the initial value is, but we know that the initial value occurs when there are zero phones sold. So they did something kind of slick. They said, look, let's work backwards. To go from this way to this way, I'm going to subtract 10. And to go from here to here, I'm going to subtract 150. Let's just go back one more step. In other words, if I sell zero phones... I should get $330. In other words, each salesperson gets a base rate of $330. The initial value is $330. So a salesperson receives a salary of $330 a week before commissions. Isn't that the B? So Y equals MX plus B. If I needed the equation, it would be Y equals what's m yeah but what's the actual value for this problem 15 x plus what's b 330 so that's the equation now what i want you to do um turn your calculators on oh we gotta hurry the bell's going to ring in a second. Uh, well, maybe we can arm wrestle later. Um, let's plug that in. We're going to say 1, 1, 5x plus 330. Okay. So clear out everything. Hit y equals. y equals is this button right here. Okay. Then plug in 15x. The x button is right here. And once you get that plugged in, I want you to hit zoom. And we're going to go down to a thing called zoom fit. Zoom fit. I, all the way down here. So hit the zoom button and scroll down. And you'll get something like this. Now watch this. When I say uh, hit the trace button now. If I enter in 10, oh, shoot. Uh, let me do this. I'm going to go X min is 0. I'm going to go up to 50. I'll just show you guys. My Y value is 0. 
and I'm going to go up to 1,000. I'm going to hit the graph. Just watch what I have on the screen. So if I hit trace and I go 10, guess what it equals? 480. If I hit 20, guess what it'll equal? 630. If I enter in 30, guess what it equals? 780. What does that mean? Yeah, that equation gives me all these values. Does that make sense? Okay.